So here I'm going to give you a quick demonstration of how to create a composite based on our week four class and field trip. So I'm going to get started and use the same images that I demoed um, during class. So here you can see um, I have my three images and I've already opened them up into Camera Raw. So right away, um, just briefly to describe best practices, um, make sure you're shooting your composite in a stable environment, um, meaning that your scenery does not move or shift between each uh, photograph here as you can see and the only thing or only visible element that is changing is your subject in that case alright so again it's best practices to open your edits up into camera raw and you're gonna select all the images that's really important because we're going to apply some global edits to all three images so you know, make sure you're holding down that shift key and then clicking onto that last image to kind of grab one, two, and three at the same time. So in this case, um, as I mentioned in class, you know, we could definitely add some global edits to these three images, you know, bring up the exposure slightly, and then, you know, in this case, I'm gonna bring in the shadows a bit more so we can see those details. Uh, and I'm just gonna bump up the clarity, so. From this point on, you know, you're more than welcome to continue on through the rest of the tabs in Camera Raw to kind of explore different options for editing. Um, but for now, at a basic level, I'm just going to open all three images into Photoshop. So I'm going to let these three images load into the program. And while they do, uh, again, I, I want to just uh, briefly explain the importance of having your plate image. So again, the plate image is your foundation in which you're placing all other composites upon. Um, so if you choose to shoot your environment without any subjects in it, that would be a great plate image. You could always go in and fine tune and you know spot remove or take out certain parts within the uh, environment itself from that point. Um, but in my case, I happen to have a subject in all three images again. So I'm just going to keep this left image as my plate image. Um, so I'm going to put all other elements onto this image 4042 here. So right away, um, let's go to a different image and kind of grab our uh, selection here. Uh, again, it's always good practices to um, just grab what you need, nothing more. Um, Definitely not less as well. Uh, and keep in mind that you're grabbing uh, the shadows as well as your subject in this case. That's going to make a difference in terms of a good composite. Um, as you can see, uh, I already had the marquee tool selected. But again, if you're not familiar, the marquee tool will always be in your tool palette. If you hover over any of the tools, it will tell you the name of that tool. So again, you can see it says rectangular marquee. So from here, you know, I'm just going to follow some universal best practices and command C or control C to copy. Go over to my plate image and I'm going to hold down the shift key. Again, I, that's really important in terms of pasting in place. So shift command V and that will paste my guy right directly where he happened to be placed within uh, the image itself. So perfectly down here in the bottom left corner, which is great. Okay. Um, you'll notice right away he's covering up our initial subject and we'll take care of that in a minute. So I'm done with this image. I'm going to close it out and I'm going to continue on to our last one and make a selection of our third subject. Okay, so that looks pretty good there. I'm going to command C to copy. Let it let my computer think for a second. Okay, go over to my plate image and shift command V to paste him right in place. And as you guys can already tell, um, we already noticed this in our demonstration in class, but our third guy just kind of fits in place. No need to blend or happen to uh, layer mask anything in or out of the scene. That's wonderful. But as you can see here with our layer one, you know, we've got a hard edge shadow here what the, that doesn't look that well blended. And then of course we're cutting off our first subject. So we need to resolve that. So right away, Again, I made some highlights in class, but here you can see I'm active on layer two. So if I turn that on and off, we're referring to our 
guy on the right side. So I'm going to go ahead and label him. So I'm just going to double click the name of the layer. And I'm just going to call him, uh, for lack of a better name, uh, right subject. Okay. And uh, so let's see what layer one is. Okay. Ah, he's the guy in the front. So we will call him front subject. Okay. And of course, if I turn him off, our background happens to have our left subject on the other side. And I could definitely call him that. Um, and then just call him left subject and say, okay. So now you can see I have them all fully properly labeled. I have left subject here. Um, let's see, I have uh, my front subject, and then of course I have my right subject here. So again, it's really important in terms of layer order and in terms of you know which layer is active. Okay, we need to apply a layer mask to front subject. So it's really important that I make sure that I have front subject activated or clicked upon. Um, in terms of creating that layer mask. So to do so, all I need to do is go down to the bottom of my layers palette. You will notice, again, if I click and, or if I just hover over the icon, it will tell me the name. It says add layer mask. That's important. I'm going to click on that. And right away, you'll see the layer mask come onto that layer, linking to the layer itself. Okay. Remember, with layer masks, if you have a white layer mask that is telling you that you can possibly see everything in this layer. So everything that we happen to copy in this layer is now currently showing. Now, if I chose to paint black or fill this layer mask with black, it's going to hide anything in that layer. So in my case here, we need to hide some parts of this layer to see behind it, okay? So what I'm going to do in this case is go down in my tools palette to the brush tool or you can press uh, B on your keyboard if you prefer the quick keys. And I already happen to have black on top of white. Okay, So this is another place where people get really hung up. You need to make sure that your color chips, by default, it might be white on black. You can always click this curved arrow or press the X key on your keyboard and make sure that black is on white. Okay. Now, again, briefly explaining here, we have some options for our brush size. Okay. So I'm going to just pump this up a little bit more, probably double it to around 400. Eh, let's bring it up a bit more. All right. That's something dramatic, but I think it'll do the trick. And you can see here, my opacity is quite low. So I'm going to pump that up too. Um, you'll notice when I'm uh, kind of hovering over opacity, my mouse changes to this hand with arrows. And if I click and drag or scrub in this case, you'll notice that it's conveniently changing the opacity. Uh, again, if you find that too difficult, you're more than welcome to just kind of click open the little window and move that slider around. It's up to you. So anyway, I've got a big brush. Um, it's nice and fuzzy, which is great. And why don't I turn on my layers so I can see what's going on. And I'm just going to brush in the section to pretty much reveal what is behind this part of the layer. Make my brush a bit smaller. And I'm pretty much just filling in this section or seemingly filling in this section to, to show us, to reveal to us what is behind our front layer. So that works really well. I like that. Um, so let's resolve this hard edged shadow. So in this case, I already have a nice fuzzy brush, which I recommend, and I'm just going to drop that opacity down to make just gradual kind of sweeps in the area. And you can see right away that it just starts to soften that edge and really makes it feel like it's, it's kind of blending within the scene, therefore feeling that much more natural. Okay. Uh, and, and like I mentioned before, you'll notice in my layer mask here, you know, I've got a big dark blob in the top left corner and that kind of like dotted area in the middle. And that's really representing the areas in which I chose to hide for this specific layer. And if you don't believe me, again, you can always just turn off the other two layers. And you can see it is exactly as I said, it's kind of hiding those parts of this layer. And again, if I choose white, white as my brush color, I can always bring back information too. So it's kind of this back and forth nature of a non-destructive workflow, which is really nice. Okay. Um, once you're satisfied, again, please don't flatten the layers. Um, just go ahead and you're going to go up to File and you're going to save this as uh, the native PSG. Just give it a nice label 
uh, preferably with your name if you can, and then send that my way. All right. So that is my quick tutorial on um, creating a composite. Um, you guys are more than welcome to, uh, you know, email me or anything like that if you have any questions. Um, so that is that. Thank you for watching.